Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the league, the league has grown from strength to strength. So, you know, I don't like to see, you know, the foreigners get asked that question all the time. And you know, you, you read the quotes that oh, Indian football is improving, and oh, they're you know getting better and better. No, it's Indian football players are, are good players. They just need the right environment to to, to flourish. Now the Indian footballers are finding the right environment to flourish, and that comes down to having the right things around them. Um, good coaches, uh, good foreign professional players that want to come and play here for the right reasons, um, a good length of season, and just a level of professionalism that goes up, goes up and up every year. That so I think from from what we've seen with the echoes around the world about Indian football. Um, you know, it's getting bigger and better, but that's down to the Indian players just having a better environment. And uh, you know, as as a as a foreign player, you you come here and you try to make a difference. Obviously, now with the, the the Asian you know passport spot on offer in every every team, a lot of boys from Australia have come across, and um, that's down to two things. Obviously, there's not a, a lot of stability or you know financial security for a lot of these guys in in Australia at the moment. The league is going through big changes with the the TV rights, um, and again with the the plus one Asian rule, um, I think the Indian uh, public like to look certainly at, 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 at Aussies first and foremost because of their great relationship, um, probably down to the, the the cricket relationship to be honest. But you know, you know what you're going to get from um, you know Aussie players like myself. You know, you're going to integrate well. Um, we we want to work hard. We're professional and we're good players. And you know. That the market's a little bit saturated with the with the Spanish players, um, and I think that's just going to change over the years. And obviously, the the foreign slots—that's the next thing um, to probably have to reduce in order to get the foreign, um, sorry, the foreign contingent to come down and more Indian players to come up. But we're still at a at, at a moment where um, the balance is still is still needed. I think we, we, we're good where we are with five on the pitch. Um, maybe it will change to four plus one eventually, but. I think right now the balance is pretty good. The VAR show. The one place for your weekly football update. So hello, very warm welcome to the VR show. The show which talks about various major football leagues in detail. Today we are going to connect and we have Bengaluru FC player Mr. Eric Parthaluta. So without wasting much time, I would, like to, I would like to first thank Eric for coming on the show. Thank you and welcome to the show. I'd like to begin by asking you, how are you, and how has everything been going on? You know, like with the pandemic and also you'll have a league starting. Hi, Sebastian. Yeah, thanks for having us, uh, mate. It's. Uh... Yeah, just a, a very different uh, season we're going to have this year. But, um, you know, the, the club's gone through a lot of effort to, to make us comfortable. And, you know, I think in some respects, it'll be an easy, even easier adjustment for us to be in the hotel uh, every single day and just have to worry about training and playing. Uh, I think we're thankful for, you know, the season being the same length. I think if it would be you know, seven, eight, nine months like this would be very difficult. Uh, you can see around the world, it's probably the only way that, that the competition is allowed to keep, to keep playing. You know, the NBA did really well in their bubble, um, you know, and didn't really have any, any cases, I believe, of coronavirus. And you can see across the world of football, you know, Cristiano Ronaldo and all these guys are coming down with cases. And, you know, albeit maybe they're, they're asymptomatic, it's still we have to, you know, follow the, the guidelines. and. The ISL are in a luxury position to be able to accommodate us in that in that regard, and you know I, I just feel like you know being condensed, just thinking about football, um, you know it, it can take its toll. But I think we're just very happy to be playing. I mean, you know to have you know five or six months away from from India and in our own homes, we you know we're very confined and not being able to you know do our thing sort of. Thing. And now we've come back here to to go, and we're we're able to do that. So I think at this point in time, we're just excited. Of course, and you're like generally pre-seasons are you are in, you are currently in pre-season and uh, generally pre-seasons the full team is secluded generally. But you would not have experienced this type of seclusion before, I guess. And you like maybe has the pre-season changed because of maybe like you all were on the rest for such a long time? Do you think like maybe compared to before the the the, se- the pre-season has changed maybe to tailor your personal needs according to how how active you were or something? 
yeah, look, there's there's a there's a different story for every single player, uh, and that's down to the the lockdowns that we've had in each country. You know, the Indian boys have had to, you know, a lot of them were locked down for months at a time, not being able to get out and having access to to facilities. Uh, obviously, in Australia, I was pretty pretty lucky to have you know a, a pretty mediocre lock. Then it's been pretty much open for business and able to train myself and um, you know get the sessions in that I've needed to, to, to have and come back fit. But you just you, you just don't get that fitness without playing matches, um, and that's one thing I think I've struggled with the last two seasons, especially having such a long off season here in India, uh, is the competitive matches. Um, and like you said, there we, we don't have enough time uh, to have a proper pre seed. I think we, the, the the foreign boys have had all. Um, uh, and, and the three other boys will have three weeks to get ready, more or less. Um, and the other other three boys we've got still in quarantine, so they're coming out this, you know, in the next couple of days. So everyone's at different wavelengths, which is not great. Um, I would have loved to have seen the season being pushed back a week or two. I think even Sunil Chetri has voiced that that opinion. But at the same time, uh, this is the way it is. You know, we we have to be thankful that we're playing football, um, providing entertainment for for so many people across the world and, and in India. Um, and for my person, good, like I just said, you just need to have those competitive matches now and, and to get match fit. Of course, and you, 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 like you mentioned, like how you are providing entertainment for people all over the, all over the world. In fact, not only in India, like, but mm-hmm. when you initially did come, I don't think so ISL was such a huge thing compared to what it is now. Like, yeah, it basically attracted almost most of the top players of the australian league this season at least you know like mm-hmm. so do you think it's growing like do do people back home when you go back do you think they talk about isl much more in a bigger or in a better way than what they would talk about maybe 2 3 years back when you had first arrived yeah absolutely uh, the league the league has grown from strength to strength so, you know i don't like to see you know the foreigners get asked that question all the time and you know you, you read the quotes that oh indian football is improving and oh they're you know getting better and better no it's indian football players are, are good players they just need the right environment to, to to flourish now the indian footballers are finding the right environment to flourish and that comes down to having the right things around them. um good coaches uh good foreign professional players that want to come and play here for the right reasons um a good length of season and just a level of professionalism that goes up goes up and up year that so i think from from what we've seen with the echoes around the world about indian football um you know it's getting bigger and better but that's down to the indian players just having a better environment and uh you know as as a as a foreign player you you come here and you try to make a difference obviously now with the, the the asian you know passport spot on offer in every every team a lot of boys from australia have come across and um that's down to two things obviously there's a not a, a lot of stability or you know financial security for a lot of these guys in in australia at the moment the league is going through big changes with the the tv rights um and again with the the plus one asian rule um i think the indian uh, public like to look certainly at, 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 at aussies first and foremost because of their great relationship um probably down to the the, the cricket relationship to be honest but you know you know what you're going to get from um you know aussie players like myself you know you're going to integrate well um we, we want to work hard we're professional and we're good players and you know the, the market's a little bit saturated with the with the spanish players um and i think that's just going to change over the years and obviously the the foreign slots that's the next thing um to probably have to reduce in order to get the foreign um sorry the foreign contingent to come down and more indian players to come up but we're still at a at a moment where um, the balance is still is still needed, I think we, we, we're good where we are with five on the pitch. Um, maybe it will change to four plus one eventually, but I think right now the balance is pretty good. Of course, and you also are personally very well travelled, like in terms of football you played, I think, in South Korea, Qatar. So, why India? How did you first, or how did Bangalore FC happen? Yeah, uh, I, I've, I've been lucky enough to play in, you know, seven or eight countries now professionally and yeah, the Indian opportunity came up uh, at the end of a contract when I was playing in, in, in Qatar, as you said there. And um, my good friend Cameron Watson was playing um, with with this team, with Bengaluru in, in the I-League. Um, and they had some success and got themselves to the 
the AFT Cup final. Um, and, you know, an agent had called me and, and I was a free agent at the time. I was, you know, considering my next move and um, it came up as an option and I spoke to He said some great things about it and, you know, when I heard we were going to play in the AFC Cup and, you know, we were going to play in the ISL at the first season, it was, um, you know, something that I really wanted to be a part of and, you know, speaking with Albert Rocker on on Skype actually before before we signed, I knew it was a project I wanted to be a part of and, um, yeah, look at me now, it's my, my fourth season here, the longest I've spent at, at any club in my career and probably the happiest I've been, so, um, you know, just, just, just really happy. Of course, and you like. I when when I looked when I was preparing the question, I saw that you played in the CSL Chinese Super League also with Tianjin Teda, and you know, like there are maybe similarities between the Chinese Super League and Indian Super League in the sense that both are a new league in terms of the wider football scheme, and also like but both have huge, you know, like fan following in terms of population. Like, what was your experience maybe playing in the Chinese Super League, which was also relatively new when you went there and also the Indian Super League which when you arrived and still now is relatively new. What are the differences or the, what are the com- uh, similarities that you came across? I think the organisation itself, uh, the Chinese Super League, League was a bit more um, experienced. It had been around you know, for 15 or 20 years before I, stuck, before I played in the, in the league. Um, the, the finances you know, in China are just uh, you know, through the roof, even more so now. Um, I think the, the the cultures are completely different between Chinese people and Indian people. Um, you know, the, the, the Chinese way of, of thinking or mentality of thinking is to throw money at problems and um, it creates more problems than, than solves them. Uh, a lot of times teams were, you know, chopping and changing foreign players and coaches because of results. Um, and it had nothing to do with the foreign players or the, or the foreign coaches. Um, because there's you know humongous amounts of money and huge crowds there, and uh, it's a big business, um, the Chinese Super League, and they've now taken a step to the side and and reduced their their foreign contingent um, on the pitch. I think you can play with two or three now, and it doesn't have to be an Asian player. So if you're playing in China, you're you know an international player. You're a, you're a good good player. But when I was playing there. Um, you know, the level was still very, very high. Uh, but I, I actually played with, um, it was an ex-Mumbai coach, uh, Alexander Guimaraes, and he he took me to China and I played 30 out of 30 games on, on offer in the league, played a couple of cup games, scored a couple of goals, did really, really well. Um, and, and the same with, with Gimmer, the coach, he had a great season. And then, you know, we, we both had three-year contracts and we came back to the start of pre-season and we're, you know, he didn't travel and I was training, uh, they were trying to push me out of my contract. And that's just the way it is in, in Asian football. And I don't think India has that side to it. I don't feel um, they've done stupid things with their money. I feel they're very, very conservative. Um, they'll they obviously pay well, you know, forget to get the players from Spain and Australia and places like that. But it's not stupid money where they're, they're, they're wasting money. And then if they make a mistake, they're more inclined to wait until the end of the season to make a decision. And I think that's always a nice thing for, especially for foreign players and coaches to not have that pressure of, it's not, not that I'm not a good player, but it's like, do I move my wife? Do I move my kids? Do I change the school? Do I chop and change my whole life to go and expect to be there somewhere for three years? And then you're in, in three or three or four months, you're back or you're without a club. So it's not as cutthroat the Indian Super League, and I don't think it's ever going to get like that. I feel um, the environment with Indian footballers and Indian staff and the clubs. Um, there's a big team and big family aspect, and there's no barriers where um, I feel in other leagues like China and South Korea, it's the foreigners and it's the it's the, it's the local players. Whereas here, we're just one big one big family, which is great. Of course, and you like uh, since we already touched on that, that like how you have. Uh well traveled in terms of your footballing career and you also said like they are like the cons of like how you know like maybe you have to your family maybe have to you know adjust with your every movement you know like with your every transfer yeah. for you personally was it something that you always wanted to travel a lot in terms of football or was it something spontaneous that happened in your career no um i wanted to be uh a steven gerrard my whole career and be at the one the one club 
Um, and that's just not the way the world the world of football works these days. Even for Stephen Gerrard, you know, he had to go and finish his career in America. Um, it's 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 a shame that football is like that. There's not many boys that, that are able to do that, and um, it, it usually comes down to, to finances and things like that. But then there's never a never a coach that lasts, you know, more than you know one one to four seasons. There's not many coaches that are. The average lifespan of a coach is very short. So um, it's a short career, and I think particularly when I started my career, I played in Scotland for the first four years, and that was. A really, really, you know, big learning curve for me about how to play the game of football, how to become a man. I was living by myself for the first time, having to do all that. Um, so that was a great experience. But when I came back to Australia, that's when I really made my name for myself, and we won a couple of titles in the, in, in a couple of years. And I got my move to China, and it, you know, you, you're talking about earning, you know, five or six times more money than what you can in Australia. And, and in no person in any walk of life who's got a short career span like that would turn it down. And I don't regret anything because um, the way it goes in Australian football, particularly with a salary cap, is if you have a good season, another team will try and take you for more money. Um, and there's not a lot of boys that just stay at the one club, you know. So had I, uh, you know, had I envisaged what the path is now to get where I am, I'd, I'd probably... I probably would have still would have taken it. You know, it took me through so many different countries and I've learned so many harsh lessons. Um, but, you know, you, you just don't walk into situations like this where you're happy. You have to go and find them. You have to keep searching, keep fighting for contracts. And that's why I'm still playing the game. I'm still hungry and still taking the knocks and getting back up. And that's the big thing about football. It's uh, it's never perfect. Um, it's it's a lot, of, a lot of bad days rather than good, but you have to... You have to learn from the bad days and, and, and continue moving forward. Of course, and you know, like the next question might be a little bit difficult and tricky, but you know, like mm -hmm. you have played for a lot of teams. And if you had to choose one team other than Bengaluru FC, because I don't want to put you in your spot, which team or way did you enjoy your time the most other than Bengaluru FC? Oh, definitely at Brisbane Raw. Um, yeah, for a quick, quick history lesson. We. We played in a team that went, you know, 36 games unbeaten over two seasons. Um, we set an Australian record of any sporting code going unbeaten for 36 games. We won um, a back-to-back -back championship, uh, premiership, um, and just, I wouldn't say revolutionised football in Australia, but we, we started to play a brand of football that no one had seen before. You know, the, the coach that we had, Ange Postacoglu, you know, it was the first coach to really start playing out from the back, um, taking risks about keeping possession. Um, and it was just one of those teams that was infectious. You weren't, you were all so close, but you were all so hungry to, to win um, that you just couldn't wait for the next game, the next game, the next game. And we were gutted when you knew the season was to an end. You were like, oh, we, we want to keep playing. And um, that infectious environment, um, is such a nice feeling to be involved with. There's not many times in your career that you have that, and there's some boys that will never have that. So um, I kind of feel at Bangalore FC, that's why I'm still, I'm still here, is because we've got the right characters that are like that. You know, you Sunil Chetris and Gupit Singh Sandhu, and it's infectious, it rubs off on you. And if you're around like-minded people that are hungry to win and do things the right way and sacrifice everything for the team, um, then it, it makes it easy to go to work every day. Of course, and you have former, I think, Brisbane Roars coach and uh, staff at least in Robbie Fowler and Tony Grant at, in the ISL right. this season. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see. Um, I, I never got the chance to meet those guys. Uh, I think Robbie spent the last season before COVID hit in, at Brisbane. And um, yeah, they didn't, didn't look like they had much time to get a thing together. But geez, he put it together quickly. Um, Obviously, I'm good friends with with, with Eugene, Eugene Sinlindo, and um, you know he, we were carpooling together last last season, and you know I've been speaking to him quite a lot, and you know I, I'm I'm really happy to see him, you know, in the ISL this season. He's a great player. Didn't get much of a chance last year, and um, hopefully he can play well under Robbie Fowler. Eugene and uh, we are from the same school. He was my senior in Bishop Court. Oh, wow. in yeah, in Bangalore, Bangalore itself. Like, there you go. Yeah. Good. He's a good boy. Yeah. 
so you know like and he he was like a aspiration you know like for many juniors in you know, like coming up because he went and did a lot like you know like for the yeah for someone you need to have someone you know like you need to have a pathway and probably he was the one which everyone could probably look up to yeah i mean he he he's got a level head on his shoulders um such a a humble guy um and you know as i said to to he didn't play a lot last year and side because we were pretty strong in the midfield area and you know he wasn't complaining in the mornings and uh you know he wasn't moaning about not playing he wasn't angry you know even the way he drives he, he was just so calm um it says a lot about his personality and you know good things come to good to good people and you know Eugene's had a little bit of bad luck with injuries the last couple of years and then not playing much last year and you know fingers crossed he's going to have a great year this year Of course, and you're like uh, again another difficult as a as a player. Which opponent was the most difficult that you played against? Poor, oh, um, you know, it's difficult to say because um, I played I played a lot of games. Um, some some of my toughest games were were played in 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 Scotland. Um, every single opponent you played against was was trying to kick you, and you learn very quickly how to. how to deal with that and um you've got to use your body and um you you can't you know you you always have to look over your shoulder before you receive the ball and see where people are because they'll come and you know take you and the ball and uh, that was a great learning curve for me but then you know I played in, in some high profile games you know grand finals and things like that and obviously with the the national team in Australia but uh We had a game against Manchester City in pre-season a couple of years ago when I was playing for Melbourne City, um, and I had the the honour of captain captaining the side, and um, they had like a full-strength team out. And at the time, it was you know Yaya Toure and Sergio Aguero and Navas and all these guys, and you know having to play against Yaya Toure in the middle of the park, it was it was. Um, not even a different level it was a different planet because to try and get the ball off him I'm 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 6 foot 4 he's a little bit taller than me and he he just couldn't get close to him with the ball he just knew how to protect his body between you and the ball and keep things simple but then as a big man just to try and he always created a yard of space for himself with his body in in between the player and those guys at the top level um you don't realize and people complain or they say oh these guys get paid a fortune what are they doing or they played a bad game but when you're actually up close playing against them it's um it's quite an experience because you 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 try and learn from them um but the reality is those guys have been bred to be you know guys who played hundreds and hundreds of games at the top level when um i think if players have had the coaching early on and they've been through the right academies it does help a lot you have to have natural talent of course and i'm not making excuses but that's the difference those guys get picked up early on in life and get the opportunity to to do that and um you know it's it's just the way it goes but it's just it's it's beautiful to watch from your close of course and you like uh, i'll talk of your stint at bangalore and you've been there for quite a while like we said i think the most you spent your time with the club i, I think if i if, you, yeah. if that's what you said so how do you describe when you look back from when you joined till now at your time at bangalore fc it's been uh oh, it's just been a, a really enjoyable experience there's no other way to put it um we we work hard every day but we have a smile on our face um you know i haven't been apart from the The, the times at Brisbane Roar with, with the team that's as this and uh, and has the right character and has the right leaders and you know the coaching staff are great it's it's a uh, it's a learning environment it's very infectious um, and and when I when I first joined obviously it was going through a bit of a transition from going in from the I League to the ISL um, and our first season I think we played so well. Um, probably our best season on 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 record in terms of uh, points and things and and then let ourselves down in the final and um you know there were reasons behind that um that we we still heard about today and uh but that's the beauty of it you know you bounce back and you try and and push for it and the year after we ended up winning the league and 
and winning the grand final. And uh, last year, you know, we didn't score enough goals. That was evident for whatever reason. Um, but, you know, from the day after that we, we, we'd got knocked down to semi-finals, it was, you know, people were making all the right noises and, you know, just, just trying to push and, and get ready for the next season and to try and see how we can get better. And even coming back now with, with you see, they, you know, the coach is already, you know, doing video sessions and showing us what we can do this year to be even better and, um, you know, what we can take advantage of with other teams and what we have to be careful of. And so that environment um, is, is very much, uh, it starts from the top, you know, with the, the CEO and, and people like that picking the right coach and, and having faith in the right coach. Um, and they've absolutely got it spot on with, with Carlos. He's one of the best managers I've worked with. Um, and that was also a difficult transition because he was our assistant coach uh, for the first season. And then, you know, he, he became our head coach. And that's not an easy transition for anybody to have. I've worked, I, I've worked in a few clubs and that's just, it, it sometimes doesn't work. But Carlos has been made for a head coaching role his whole life and he's he's a pleasure to work for and then from that from that then he has to pick a squad um and i think i've seen at bfc great young players um the the the, the level of the young players we have this year is the highest we, i've ever seen probably in india the boys are, are fantastically you know technically so aware um, that comes from guys like, you know, Musa, he's our, our youth coach, is coaching with us, uh, picking some, some really good young guys to get a chance. And then Carlos is not afraid to throw these guys in and play. Um, and then the foreign contingent, obviously, we've got our spine still there. And um, if, if you go by the signings, it looks like we, we've got a lot of firepower now because that's something we lacked last year. And so all the ingredients just seem to be, you know, more finely tuned each year. And... You know, I don't want to. I don't want to talk too soon, but there's, there's. Uh, we've done everything we can right now to have success this year, and if, if we don't, we only have ourselves to, to as, as the players. Of course, and you're like Bangalore FC. A big part of them has been their fans. To mention maybe the West Block Blues has been as an example. So, how much will their absence in the upcoming season affect the team? Do you think it'll have a big effect? Yeah, it, it's. Uh, um, devastated actually because that was a big reason of you know when I first signed was was you know I, I really wanted to have that level of engagement with fans and to have a nice experience about playing in front of a crowd that you know adored adored its players um, I've heard great things about the club through through Cameron Watson obviously but um, playing in front of them was just a different experience and uh, it, it didn't matter if it was a, a Tuesday night in the AFC Cup or you know, a game against the Kerala Blasters, getting 30,000 people at the stadium. It, it, they always seem to make the right noises and they're forever positive. Um, I've never seen or heard a bad word from the supporters, which is very unusual. Um, but that support, we we draw on from, from a lot of our, our games where we're behind or we're drawing in the last, you know, five, 10 minutes. So I hope it hasn't got an adverse effect on us. I do feel playing behind closed doors is going to help our teams when possibly they are not good under pressure or, you know, coming to the Kantira and, and being under pressure. So that might help teams um, and maybe won't help us, but uh, I'm sure we'll, we'll be keeping in touch via, you know, social media and things like that. But that was the biggest disappointment. And also in life in Bangalore, you know, I've been there, it's my fourth year and um, I love living in living in Bangalore. I had my own freedom to, to do what I wanted to do, and you know, knew where to go for a coffee or go for a beer or for a, for a meal. Um, you know, I'm really going to miss Bangalore this year, and we, we all hope that you know this 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 virus just contains somehow we can get back to playing at the stadium next year. So, which is your go-to place for coffee in Bangalore? Well, there's a couple uh, third wave roasters. It's a bit of a bit of a franchise, unfortunately. That's where I started off uh, getting getting my coffees, and obviously there's a Starbucks there, which is not is not great. Um, but, you know, I'm in Naga, so I, I I was traveling up and down 100 feet road, and there was a new cafe that came out every week. So I don't know how I kept up kept up with most of them. Um, Levon Levon uh, 
Lavon Cafe was a, a place I loved to go to and got quite uh, close with the, the manager there and um, they made some really, really good almond croissants and their coffee was, was draw. So, uh, look, I, I'm going to miss all that, but I really hope at the end of the season when um, we're, we're allowed to leave the, the building um, that we can, you know, sort of get down to Bangalore somehow and spend some time in the city and, uh, you know, we, we, we don't know what's going to happen with the, with the virus. Nobody does, but um, just trying to be positive and look forward to, to, you know, being a part of, you know, a fan environment again. Of course, I knew like you are in your mid thirties and uh, most players at least kind of think about hanging their boots from mid thirties to late thirties. I think that's the thought they have. Have you thought about anything like that? Yeah, I, it's a horrible feeling because, um, you know, no one ever wants to get old in any walk of life. Um, and, you know, I posted something on my Instagram yesterday before about it being my, my 15th year as a professional footballer. And, um, you know, I've been playing the sport for 30 years, but a professional for 15. And when I look back, uh, getting that first professional contract, um, it was, you know, a two-month contract. And then I went on to, to score in my first game and got offered a two-and-a-half-year contract. And that's how my career started in the UK. And, you know, you look back from there's just so much that has happened, but you feel, you just feel you're a better and, and more fit player than when you were when you were 20. And it's a strange feeling because it may not be the case, but um, I think... If you're, if you still have the luxury of playing at 34, like like myself, um, there's a reason for it. And if you were acting the same way you were in your 20s, uh, you you know you wouldn't be here playing in your 30s. So, you know, I look at people like Sunil Chetri or Ibra Ibrahimovic and these guys who are playing, you know, beyond you know late 30s, 38, 39. Um, that's my target. I want to try and play as long as possible. I love the sport, but I don't want to disrespect the sport either. So um, I think everybody will know when it's their time. The last thing you want to do is get the tap on the shoulder and be told that you're not wanted anymore. And it's always nice to be on your own terms, you know, if you're not getting injured or if you have luck of, of playing well in a good team and have a good environment, like I said. Uh, but, you know, I feel, I feel fantastic. I, I look after myself and... Uh, more years in my contract here um and let's see beyond that i want to i want to keep playing but beyond that i'd love to love to stay involved in football i think it'd be a shame to walk away from from what i've experienced around asia and, and the world of football to to choose a different life so if it's coaching or in the media or, or you know let, let's see what happens but uh my 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 football hat is is completely on as a, as a player at the moment still of course, and you like if you had to choose between one of these two, what would you choose? A ninety-eight minute winner, uh, minute winner, or a one-nil win? Who's, who scores the goals? You score. <laughs> um, oh, well, my whole career's been been lucky like that, scoring late goals. But you know what? I, I think I get the most satisfaction. Getting us. Um, there's plenty of times in a in a defensive midfielder's career if you if you score a goal and it's last 10 minutes it's one nil uh you you want to keep it one nil and and be the only person that scored the goal because the limelight is is rarely on a a midfielder a person that does their their quiet job or the dirty job if you like um so for me it's it's, it's a one nil win all, all day of course, Anil, like if you had to choose one, Mug, it might be difficult, but if you had to choose one coach who had the most influence in your career, who would that be? Yeah, uh, different different times. Um, you know, I've had many coaches that have influenced me, um, particularly in my early years. You know, it, if it was, you know, giving advice, was it coaching, was it giving me a chance? Um was it believing in me? Was it pushing me? There's just so many people that have had an influence in my career. And um, you only really start to single out the ones when you become a professional because uh, everyone can be a good footballer and be technically good. Um, but to have a manager that, you know, 
makes you believe in yourself, maybe even believe in things that aren't even real, but get the most out of you to perform. Um, there's very, very few few coaches that can do that. Uh, Ange Postacoglu, who is now the coach of uh, Yokohama Marinos in the in the J League, he was the the Socceroos coach and also uh, my coach at Brisbane Raw. He brought me back from Scotland to Brisbane. Um, you know, he overhauled the squad. It was something like 15 new players. That club went from finishing 10th, bottom last to winning the league two years in a row with him um, overnight. And it was one of those where he brought people to the club who had a point to prove and he knew how to get the most out of them. He wasn't the best man manager, but tactically he was so spot on about what he believed and he made you believe in absolutely everything and, to, and just to trust him and follow him to the, the nth degree. Um, and he changed every single one of our careers. A lot of boys were, you know, maybe on the outers or on the fringes of other teams or had come back from a long-term injury or bad form. Um, and he completely, you know, turned careers upside down. And, and every single one of the boys that played in that team went on to have a good, successful career. Uh, on that, throughout Asia, it's pretty, it's pretty hit and miss. You know, you meet some nice guys. Uh, you know, as I said before, I've not really been in a club long enough to sort of enjoy or to get much out of it other than just to perform for yourself. But, you know, Carlos is another one. It'd be wrong for me not to say that. I've been playing for him for a couple of years, but um, he's another one that, uh, you know, for different reasons. It's, um, I like to keep the player-coach relationship. Um, you know, we used to be quite close when he was the assistant manager and that's a different role. But I feel like when I go out there, I don't want to let him down. And that's what motivates me as a player. It might be different for somebody else. Um, and he is so precise with all his tactical detail. Um, he doesn't leave anything unturned. So for me to play for someone like that and he, his analysis is spot on, he doesn't get, you know, flustered or angry too much at the wrong times. Um, and we're all here together. It feels like we're all one big family trying to, to move this thing forward. And um, he makes everyone feel a part of it, not just the starting 11. So, you know, that's that's why I'm still here at the club. Definitely, and you're like we'll end it up, and we have last few questions. And you're like the one of the last is, you know, you have been playing for quite a while, and if you had to give a piece of advice to a young footballer, what would that be? It's very cliche, but just never give up. Um, you know, I was many many times in my career having you know this you know crossroads, go one way or the other. You just can't give up. If, if it's truly what you, you believe in and what you desire, anything in, in life, you've just got to go for it. Um, there's an element of luck. Of course there is. But you need to be able to put yourself there at the right place at the right time. Um, and when that time comes, you've just got to be able to perform and, and, and perform in front of the right people. So just never, never give up. If you have an injury or if you have a bad season or if you have bad anything, just, just don't give up. Have some determination, and um, that's what's got me through. You know, I was never the most technically gifted player my my whole life, but I worked harder than everybody else. I was there before training, after training, on days off. You know, against the wall, getting my technique better. What's my job as a defensive midfielder? I, 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 I learned the game. I did everything possible to become a better footballer, and I'm still doing it now. Um, and you just, you just can't ever stop. Um, you know that journey so just don't ever give up and, 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 and particularly that advice comes to young players when they've got something I see a lot of players in the ISL particularly that have got to this level now and they think that that's it that that's that's the, the, the most they can go um, I'm, st I'm still 34 and I, I want to go again to another level I want to take this club and, and play in the Asian Champions League I want to lift more trophies. I want to keep playing till I'm 40. I know that may not be possible, but that's the desire you have to have. So once you reach that level of success by not giving up, just don't don't give up again. Just keep going, keep going, keep going. You'll drop back down with something. You keep going, you keep going. So, yeah, it's that determination. It's going to come from within. Um, you know, it, it's, it's funny even, you know, you look at kids these, da kids these days, um, even in my own family back home, you know, they're, they're great. They're great little athletes, my, my nephews and nieces. And 
Um, but the way the world is these days, no one goes outside and plays with each other, all their phones. And it's, it's, it's so structured to go, oh, training is here, training there. Train. But what are you doing differently to the next person? Because if you're all doing the same thing every day, you don't get any better than anybody else. Um, and, and I know I'm kind of mixing my words here, but that's another lesson is uh, you, you, you have to be doing something more than the other person, whether that's on the or different. Um, or is that, you know, working harder in, in the classroom and, and studying more so you know your stuff when you go to school. It's, it, 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 it's even, I'm here in the team. If I just keep going to the training sessions every day, I won't get any better. I have to do something extra less a re recovery, do an extra ice bath, have a more, have a longer sleep, eat better food, um, do an extra training session, you know, go to the gym, stretch before training, whatever it is, you, you, you have to keep looking for that edge to keep getting better. And that keeps you on your toes. Of course. So we'll end it up with one cliche question. Are you team Ronaldo or team Messi? Messi. I have to say that because the whole, the whole staff are from, uh, from Barcelona. So, <laughs> um, oh, it's a difficult one, isn't it? I, I just, there's obviously going to be comparisons with the, the amount of goals and the Ballon d'Ors and all those types of things. I think statistically Ronaldo is going to have the edge because he's changed competitions and he scored more goals and whatever. But um, if you were to go and watch a game of football, um, there would be no comparison between the two. Definitely. Messi all day. Yeah, definitely. I, I've been lucky to watch one Messi game, I think, at Camp Nou. So. Wow. That's amazing. Awesome. So, you know, like on that note, Eric, thank you so much for talking to me and I wish you all the best and Team Bangalore FC for the upcoming ISLC and hope you can win it and hope yeah. we can talk in soon. Thank you once again. Take care, stay sure. safe. Bye. Thank you, Sebastian. Thank you very much. Thank you. Player-wise, it would have to be Steven Gerrard just because, again, before before I became a, a journalist, you know, he was, he was someone I just admired massively in terms of the absolute complete footballer. I think if you were trying to, like, make a footballer in a factory he would it would be Steven Gerrard someone who you know he, I think Jamie Carragher summed it up best once when he said you know Steven Gerrard's biggest strength is he doesn't have any weaknesses ah the stadium uh, I, I don't see really uh, need to do that mainly um, such a, a big spending but it's true that it would be a, a fantastic stadium that's not bad but uh, you have to be careful and mainly at this moment uh, when we are going to face a very difficult time.